Hi, this is uh, Lazarus Cover YouTube at the Junction of Faith and Recovery. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that come up as we go through this, uh, this uh, illness thing, uh, the coronavirus virus thing. Um, and one of the things that occurs to me is that, that we struggle with the junction of faith and recovery. Recovery is about, you know, sort of not drinking, not using, and overcoming our stuff. And faith is about, you know, getting in step with our beliefs. And what I'd like to talk a little bit about, I'm not too clear, but I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the bumpy road. You know, if, if you're if you're going through this uh, coronavirus thing and you're in recovery, it presents a lot of challenges to you. Um, and it, uh, it makes things really sort of difficult. And I want to talk about faith and recovery and the benefits of it and the struggles of it. And I didn't. I didn't do that. I didn't pay attention to it. It was just the way it was. And, you know, I have to look back on that. And when I got sober and I started asking God for help, you know, that was, that was something I had to, had to deal with. You know, what was, the, what, was the, what was going on with me? Why was I so, so not wanting to have faith? And then what happened when I started to have faith? What were the stumbling blocks in recovery and in my faith, in the Christian faith? What were the stumbling blocks? And that's what I'd like to talk about because, you know, if you're going, going, going all the time, you don't really think about this stuff. But if you're slowed down to a crawl, you know, when you're slowed down to a crawl and you, you have to stay in the house and, you know, you're watching video and you're, you might even be catching up on your spiritual life a little bit. You know, well, what's, wh what do you think about during those periods of time? You know, a lot of times we move so fast in recovery and everything like that that we never really take, take stock of where we are spiritually or anything, you know. And then if you, the coronavirus, especially for me being older, you've got to take stock of a lot of things, you know. Um, Things are, you know, theoretically to young people, really not true, but they feel like they got got this situation, you know, by the short hair. They, they figure that they're young and they're not going to get uber sick. Not, their odds are better, but not completely awesomely great, you know. So all of us, especially us older people, have to take stock. We, you know, usually we sort of, I'm in my 70s, and I, you know, you, you do a rather frequent calculation about, you know, where you are, you know, and, um, and usually we, we sort of pretend that we're okay and we're good and we got, we, we got, we got, we got time to go. Well, with this thing, you, you don't necessarily feel like you, that guarantee is there. You can't guarantee that that's going to be that way. Um, so you take a, a, an inventory of your faith. But let's go over some of the stuff. I'll tell you a little bit of my story. And I'll try to read your mind. Because uh, in this particular time, if you're in recovery and you're watching this, um, then you're, you're, you're sorting out your recovery. And, and also the spiritual angle of your recovery, you know. Now, if you're a brand new sober person and you're coming to Jesus or something like that, what do you want? What are you looking for? You're looking for not to drink. You're not to drink and not to drug, you know. And you're also looking for some sort of relief from all the stuff that comes along with not drinking and drugging. You know, all the anxiety that comes, all the physical unpleasantness that comes, all the turmoil that comes because of 
you know, the sort of sort of cavalcade of stored up stuff that we've managed to build into our lives. You know, we get sober and things get better, but we also have these sort of lingering things that we've done, stupid things we've done in our life that was exacerbated by our drinking and our drugging that they don't m miraculously disappear. They're like fester a little bit. They're like, you know, the relationship you got into when you were using. Or the relationship you got into when you were first sober and clean. And lo and behold, sick, sick people get in relationships with sick people. And here you are sober a while and the relationship you're changing and maybe the other person isn't changing or you got you got clean together you got sober together you formed a relationship getting sober and you're not get you're not changing in the same rate that the other person's changing you know your your journey and their journey are going this way instead of together and um and you've made commitments, and you've, uh, you know, you sought the American dream, and it's complicated, you know, and and you sort of put together, you cobble together, sort of, uh, with your life and all the stuff you put together in your recovery, building, the, recovering that new life that you want. You cobble together sort of a uh, a spiritual erector set of stuff, you know. Because going to AA and NA, you it's basically a store, an erector set store of miscellaneous things that you can put in. And the thing that people like about AA is that well, I can take this and I can leave that. You know, well, I, I got this girder here and a fruit screws here, and I'm going to build this this little thing that does this and that, you know, and, and then you can go to meetings and talk about the, this, this erector set spiritual life you put together, you know, and everybody's is a little different and it's sort of cool and, you know, and everything and you can, you can, you can pick and choose, you can pull something off and, gee, I like that idea and this thing, I don't like that, I don't like this, but I like this and that and everything like that. You know, that is a a in a spirituality. You put it together. You put the you put together your spirituality the way you want, and nobody criticizes anybody. You know what's the difference? If you're not drinking, you're not drugging. It's the same. You know, you know, and hey, that's the that's the contract you you make when you go into a a and a is 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 easy peasy. Everybody, everything's good for everybody. Everybody puts in their mixing pot of stuff. They say, okay this, and okay that, and something like that. And you know, the first four or five, three or four or five years, I think are like that. You're sort of putting together a, uh, a, a spiritual erector set of stuff. You know, and, and there's, in my experience with AA and NA, it was, uh, I often say that my early spiritual days in AA were a little bit like the uh, the scenes in Star Wars where they go into the the sort of galactic bar room with all the different types of people. That's what the spiritual thing was like in the beginning for me. You know, I went into AA and I was a pastor's kid, but I really wasn't spiritually. I I really wasn't spiritually very perceptive. And I went in there and I got exposed to some of the most amazing, amazing, and I'm derogatory amazing thing. My first sponsor, you know, seduced women by reading tarot cards to them. Um, he was a personality guy and he worked the program and he was sober, I don't know, awesome amount of time, a year and a half, two years. And he trailed along with this older guy with sort of gray hippie hair. Um, I used to call him like he was a, 
a Charles Manson look-alike. He was a, an older guy, I mean older, you know, like 45 or 50, and he was guamp, he was, he had sort of like a, uh, he, he specialized in younger, new women in a program. You know, we had a name for him and I can't repeat it here. Um, and, and he basically, you know, there's guys in AA that sort of are, are a little bit predators. They go for the, the young women and stuff. We have a name for him and I can't repeat it. Um, it's frowned upon, but tolerated. And um, so these guys, this guy, you know, tarot cards and massages and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, what? You know, I, I dumped him fairly quickly, you know, because in general, the most people I ran with were reasonably decent people, and my sponsor was just a little bit out in the ozone, so we did But that's that's what you got. You also got Transcendental TM, you got yoga. I know some people are into yoga, and I'm not going to get in the middle of that. But um, Eastern mysticism, a whole bunch of different things. And at that point in time, um, it was very big in the uh, the early 80s, in, uh, early late 70s, early 80s, a uh, big Jesus movement was in it. And that's what I sort of went into. Um, you know, I chased a girl into a prayer meeting and she was, she was wonderful, but she's crazy. I didn't catch her, but um, she took me to a prayer meeting and I got hooked on the, on, on a spiritual part of the thing. I got, I got to be a Jesus person and I, I gravitated to the Jesus people and stuff like that, and uh, I ended up going to church and, you know, sort of drifting away from AA, but, you know, that's what I'm talking to you about. You have to sort of look at your recovery, but you also got to look at the your spiritual journey. Now, if your spiritual journey is just AA, then it's probably a little bit simpler. It's going to be rocky. It's not, you know, it's going to be sort of an easy road through the whole thing. You know, the question is how, how stable spiritually in the long run is it? Especially when you come to something like we're in right now, you know. How's that? How's that? How's this that thing working for you right now? You know, how's that working for you right now? Because, you know, you know, it's a, you know, is it God? A group of drunks? Well, you can't, you can't talk, you can't talk and fellowship with your drunks. You can get on the phone and you can interconnect. And a lot of people are doing that. They're doing meetings. We did meetings that way when a storm came and stuff like that. But what, you know, these are times when you have to sort of sit down and say, okay, what do I do? What do I do? You, you have to take an inventory of the spiritual life that you, your spiritual erector set, and see how it's working. To see, to see under different circumstances what's, what's going to go with it. You know, um, and, and that's a difficult that's a difficult question for me. You know, I've been saved. You know, I've been sober 45 years, and I've been saved in a evangelical Pentecostal sense for probably 43 years. Um, and I've spent most of my sobriety in the church, not in AA, but in the church. I've I've been in Christian recovery all that time, basically, in varying forms. But basically, my sober time was in churches. Um, and in a strange sort of way, that's what I want to talk about. You know, if you're an AA and you've been there, you have a lot of benefits. You know a lot of people, you know, it's not really super rocky and crazy. You know, it, your ship isn't crashing onto the onto wild beaches and stuff like that. You're, it, if, if you look back on your life, it's 
you know, you're content and you're mellow. A lot of people like that, you're content and you're mellow. You know, but in times like this, when the, the systems are interrupted, we have to look at what we're doing. We have, to, we have to evaluate what's going on with our spiritual life. You say, well, I don't, it doesn't matter. I, I, I phone, my, phone my sponsor, we talk on the phone. I'm well connected with a lot of people. You know, my life is full. I'm accepted, I'm respected, everything is going good. And, um, but as we come into this particular situation, there's another ingredient that's added to sort of the, that immediacy of, of uh, danger, of, uh, of disruption, like permanent disruption of everything. You know, all of a sudden, everything that I've sort of built, like my erector set of, of situations and things that I've used to, to sort of carry me through, you know, the erector set is not as as strong as I thought it was. And that's a problem. This, these are times that test that erector set, to test, to test the, the fundamentals of my spiritual thing. In AA and NA they call it your spiritual program. You know, in the church they call it test your walk. In other words, how's your walk with the Lord? You know, a whole, it's a whole different language, and I, that's what I'm, you know, at the junction of faith and recovery. You know, I want to talk recovery to recovery people, and faith to faith people, and I want to introduce you to each other. You know, um, you, 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 you have to take stock of, of that. And then I'm saying, you know, you know that I'm going to do it. I'm going to say, come to Jesus. But then I have to introduce you to, a, <laughs> forgive me church, you know, there's a new menagerie of things. I said when I went to AA, it was like coming to a Star Wars bar room with all the crazy creatures. <laughs> church people are not going to like this, but coming into the Christian church is like that too. It's a different kind of thing you know, Christians dress themselves up pretty good in all sorts of stuff. They, they, they stay well buttoned up. They stay, you know, together, you know. By necessity, by reputation, they try to hold themselves in a certain way. In a way. Um, but it is a menagerie nevertheless. My church people aren't going to like it. But it is a menagerie. It is a whole bunch of characters. And I thought when I first got saved and stuff like that, I said, well, there was the other. I'm in a new world. These are new people, new creations. These are all born again people in Jesus and everything like that. And therefore, I can expect them to rise to the new standards. Church life was a lot like the, uh, the Star Wars barroom scene. It was filled with all, all sorts of people that I didn't quite understand. I, I expected that, you know, Christians sort of morphed into a cookie quarter cutter type of thing. You know, that they, you know, that they were always nice, that they were always wonderful, that they were always honest, that they were always altruistic, that, I mean, you were, you were safe with all of them. They, they, they just were transformed into wonderful, trusting, loving people, all of them. And, um, and, and I, I, didn't, I didn't really, I, and I, I thought they'd be sort of homogeneous you know, to my way of thinking. In other words, they were like me. And it turns out they weren't. I mean, this is a, churches are, are uh, you know, groups of people. Um, and very willful people too. 
And so what I discovered was is that um, churches are like AA, only more so. Um, you know, you go to a group, some groups are one way and some groups are another. You know, there's a, the Woburn AA was like hardcore, you know, and then there was the, uh, the big book fanatics, you know, do it this way or perish. Um, and then there was, there was the fads that would run through AA and stuff like that. And the funny thing is, is I, as I get, I run a sober house and I get to hang out with the program people again, the, the, the fads are still there, they're just a little different. Some are there, I mean, I can say, yeah, I was around when that kind of thing started, you know, but, but churches are like that too. And if you, if, if you're going to, out of recovery into a church, you have to understand that the churches are very sort of tribal, you know, um, churches have a flavor, you know, and denominations have a flavor. And it changes. <laughs> and sometimes churches have a flavor and there's like the story of the fly and the ointment. In other words, there's a, there's a dead bug in the, in the ointment. And so you don't know, but this church might have a, 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 a carcass floating around in, a, in the bottom of the pool and you don't know it, it's just that there's this faint smell. Um, the Lord's there and He works, but there's this, what's going on, what, you know, and then, you know, what happens is you, you get, you, what happens is you get disappointed because you, you think that, that you're coming to a safe place where everybody is, is, is lifted higher. And that's generally what happens, but a lot of times there's this undercurrent and, and, and there's, you have to live with disappointment. You know, that was the story of my, my journey in the church was, is like, it was a, it was a, it was a journey of, of being disappointed because my expectations were, were not realistic, you know, you know, Finally, I understood the saying, you know, the church is a hospital for sinners. In other words, we're, we're rec Christians are recovering from being completely lost. You say, well, that's not, I don't play for a but what I'm saying is, is, is that, you know, the church is a m m modification of the Star Wars barroom. A lot of different people, a lot of different things and a lot of stuff and it's all in a mixing pot and there's the the spirit of Jesus in there working to make it better but there you can't be surprised because things are not what you think so that's one of the things I want to say is that you know when we come into this coronavirus thing you know and you're you're evaluating your thing if you You've come to faith, and you've been severely disappointed, and you've just gone back to AA, and you're bitter, and you're angry, and you're not going to give Jesus any more chance. That's a mistake, because I found him utterly reliable at all times. Is his church reliable at all times? Absolutely not. But he is reliable at all times. You know, is the church dependable? Not all the time. Some are. Some, I've met the one most wonderful people on the planet in church. Wonderful saints, absolutely gorgeous people, just gorgeous people, transformed people, the salt of the earth, just absolutely marvelous. And I've found people with a name, have the name of being something, and as crooked as any back alley in Boston in the combat zone in the old days, you know, as, as worn and crooked and, and dangerous as any bad place in the, in the back roads of Alangapo City in the good old days. Just 
disappointing, crushingly disappointing. But always Jesus is the Jesus is a Jesus who loves his church. He loves his church. And he died for it and he's always struggling to to bring it to good fruit. But you have to accept the fact that there are going to be this is this is a this is a you know a hospital for sinners. This is a this is a rough rough place. You know, you just have to understand that it, it's it's a little bit like your your school play when you were you were you were a kid. You're all dressed up, and you know Joey's Joey, but he he's dressed up as somebody else, and he plays at it, and he's not very good, and you know he's Joey, but. He plays something else. You know, Joey isn't the King Arthur. He's Joey, dressed up as King Arthur. You know, but you've got to understand that everybody is play acting as Christians and for the really, a lot of times, for the right motives. They really, really are called to change, and they're trying. You know, in that trying, somehow things morph and change, and Jesus does actually, absolutely change them. That's the good part. That's the good part of the church. You have to settle down and parse out the good from the bad. I was stupid when I first went to AA, and it took me a while to parse out the good from the bad. You know, I hung with people that knew good people, and, and they would say, you know, this guy's an idiot, but this guy's good. And, and we'd, we'd sort of help each other out, find the good, the good people, the good, the good people in recovery. You know, he's, he's got 15, 20, 30 years, and he's solid. You know, you pick him for a sponsor. Her for a sponsor, you know, he's a, he's a wild ass pig. You just avoid him at all costs. You know that's why. In the church, it's a little different. It's very hard to find anybody that's honest about it. But some people will say, hey, you know, you know, you go to again. It's the same as AA. You you go for the winners. You go for the people that aren't play acting the thing in AA and you know, there's people that play act a good recovery you know is rubbish but in the church you're looking for you're looking for the fruit of the spirit the Bible calls the fruit of the spirit love joy peace long suffering make smiles gentleness you're looking for that you're not looking for an angry person or a political person or a thing like that you're looking for love joy peace long suffering meekness mildness gentleness you're looking for that. So you, you look for the winners. You look for the people where the Spirit is active in their lives, where they've been mellowed and humbled and changed. And you can find those people. There's In every church, as ridiculous as it is, there's usually people like that. You know, so as you're, as you're in this time when you're sort of, the churches aren't open and you're making some phone calls and you're trying to figure out what to do and you're taking inventory of the thing you know you know look and think and pray and and you'll find the winners in AA and NA it's the winners the people that are sober long that have the promises of the program well in your church you're looking for the people who are honest and open and not devious, who are not showboats, but are humble and reasonable and truthful and loving and compassionate, you know, and honest, that'll confront you and say, no, nah, I don't think that's going to work. You're not looking for the people that are leverage you over guilt, that are, that are manipulate, manipulative. There's a lot of that in the church. You know, they use, they basically use the Bible as a club. And if you don't, if you, if they want you to move a certain direction, they just sort of bring Bible passages to bear and they just beat you with it. That's not what you're looking for. 
that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for the gentle move of the Spirit, the, the wooing of the Spirit that, that gently says, hey, is this a good idea? You say, is this biblical? Is this a good idea? And you go that way. But in a church, it's very hard to find people that are willing to admit that things go wrong. And, and that's, a, that's a hard situation. So what do you do? What do you do about that? Well, the good thing about being a believer in Jesus is that you can ask him and he'll answer. If, you're, if you don't even th know whether Jesus is right for you and you're, you're, you're just going along, do what I did. I said, Jesus, I don't know whether I believe. But if you're who you say you are, show me. If you're King of Kings and Lord of Lords, show me somehow. You know, help me to understand. You know, I'm open and willing to find out who you are, but show me. And you know what? He did in ways that are not any kind of manipulation. He just, he made it obvious to me in a million different ways. Yeah, I, I am who I say I am. That created a problem because I had to deal with that. And finally I dealt with it and said, okay, Jesus, you're who you say you are. I'm who you say, say I am. And please come into my heart and, and, and let's do this together. And I got saved. You know, I didn't even know what saved was. But I got saved. I got, I got the, the understanding that, that truly Jesus did die for me. That he truly did. And that, that if I accepted that and I just invited him in and believed that he could make it all better that that somehow was what he wanted and it was he once he once he I did that then I was I was his and he was mine it's not like he owned me just it's like he owned me but I owned him it's like uh you know he owned me, and I got, with that, I got all the protection and the peace and the rest that I, I just have to call and I'd get rest and peace, you know. All the forgiveness I need, he'd, he'd give to me, you know. All, all of him he gave to me. And me in exchange, I gave him whatever I could cobble together that I could manage to give to him. I just gave him the, you know, he gave me everything from him. And then I gave, gave him, I gave him the erector set. I gave him this cobbled together erector set of spiritual stuff. And I said, here, you know, let's put it together the way you want to put it together. And I trust you for that. And he did. He has been. You know? And in a coronavirus thing, is, is that when I'm in my age, it's, it's, it's a little scary. And I just have to say, Lord, you've been, we've been through so much together, and I found you absolutely dependable. And, and I know that if I have any worries or concerns about my kids or me or what's going to happen in the future or whatever, it's hard, but I can emotionally just go before him and give it to him and I trust that he'll take care of it because he's done that for 43 years he's done that taken care of us supported us you know all the things that were absolutely important for everything he's taken care of and I survived the church and it's been a lot it's I've been sober 45 years 43 years in the church and I've been through some of the most amazingly difficult things in the church. You know, broken hearted, wrecked, disappointed. But you know, Jesus always came through. Always came through. 
The church is his, but it failed a lot of times. But he never failed. You know, he never failed in here. He never failed in here. Am I broken in there? Am I hurt in there? Am I scarred in there? Yeah. But somehow that doesn't wreck it completely because I can say, yeah, but Jesus. Yeah, but Jesus. You know, you know, the church isn't the end. The church isn't isn't the end. Jesus is the end. You know, it, this is this is it's it's gonna be his place eventually. You know, eventually it's his place. You know, we're the ones that are gonna change. Trust me. And it's not like you will change. It's like we will be changed. We will be transformed. We will be redeemed and transformed. You know, and, and that's a marvelous promise you know and I have to believe it because it's not the way it is sometimes but I have to believe it you know he says he'll wipe away every tear and there's plenty of tears here plenty of anguish here plenty of brokenness here he said I'll, I'll wipe away every tear I'm gonna fix it but I might not fix this place but I'm gonna fix it because we are together we are together you know I am yours and you are mine you know you, you are part of the kingdom now and I don't lose what's mine I correct what's mine I change what's mine, but you know, if we're, we're in recovery, aren't isn't that what we're all about? We're all about change. I want to change. I want to be different. I want to be renewed. That's what Jesus is. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden. I will give you rest. You're weary and you're tired from the journey. I will come and I will give you rest. I'll heal all the broken places. I'll heal all the hurts and the anguish. Will it happen overnight? No. But in the end, it will happen. You know, when you got the coronavirus, for us old people, <laughs> it might be sooner rather than later. But I have to trust. I'm scared. I have to trust. I have to trust, you know, that the my kids will get taken care of. I have to trust a lot of things. But I trust that he will do what he has to do. And you have to trust that if you give your heart to Jesus, that that erector set of faith that you've cobbled together, he's gradually over going to time, going to strengthen it, change it, morph it, so that it is eternal, powerful, and unique. Because he's going to change you not into a cookie-cutter Christian. He's going to turn you into a unique triumph and trophy of his grace. That's what he's going to do. You're going to be a trophy of his grace. In unique, absolutely, utterly unique. Formed perfectly by him. A unique, unique masterpiece of grace mercy, love, and power. And you say, I, 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 I say by grace through faith. You know, we, I, we don't have the imagination to imagine the transformations he's going to do in us. And, and certainly a lot of them aren't going to be here because this place is a little strange and weird. So, I want you to, if you believe, I want you to come to Christ. But if you, whatever, if you're if you're working your erector set in recovery, you know, just come and ask Jesus to help you put it together better. Um, this is Chuck at Lazarus Recovery YouTube at the junction of faith and recovery.